Crossroads. Um, they are spoken about a lot in a lot of well, a lot of the traditions and paths. Um, you'll come across it in witchcraft. You'll come across it in hoodoo. Um, I think probably the most popular use of crossroads is in uh, hoodoo practice. Um, especially if you listen to people like Robert Johnson, you know, the old blues singers and things like that, um, with the whole tale of them uh, selling their soul to the devil at the crossroads uh, in order to become uh, amazing uh, musicians and guitar players. Um, but in hoodoo, you use the crossroads a lot. Uh, it's used uh, mostly to to uh, lay down tricks or uh, dispose of tricks, uh, tricks being your spell, your spell working, and um, but also in, in, in witchcraft, especially like traditional witchcraft, uh, where you would uh, go to a crossroads to uh, speak to a crossroads uh, deity. Um, now the, the deities themselves are the crossroads deities are also also called liminal deities and liminal is basically a space between betwixt as it were and there are a lot of lot of liminal deities uh, that people work with uh, hecate for instance um, in the more voodoo hoodoo traditions you've got papa legba or um, Allegua, and they are deities that a lot of people work with to not just, it depends on the work you're actually doing. I mean, if you're doing a type of work, working where you need to actually cross between worlds, then cr the crossroads are, are a good place to do that. And a liminal deity would be a good, good um, um, god or goddess to actually work with. Um, but you can also use crossroads with your spell work. As I said, with hoodoo, you can lay down tricks at a crossroads, um, things like that. So where do you find crossroads? Crossroads are any two rows that actually cross each other. Like, you know, they, they, just, they just cross each other like that. So you have a, a crossroads in the middle. And that's where you would lay down your tricks. Now, you, these can be your tar roads that you find, you know, your streets. Um, obviously, if you've got a busy street, then um, I, I suggest not using it because it might be detrimental to your health if you're standing in the middle of a crossroads and you've got all this traffic going by. Um, but, you know, you can you find quiet streets and you can use those as your crossroads. Or you can use paths that cross in a forest or a field or something like that. So you'll probably get two paths that actually cross and they form a crossroads. Now, there's there's a lot of myth, mythology behind this, um, a lot of tradition. Um, so I'm not gonna go into all of it. What I wanna speak about in this one, in this video is about how to create an artificial crossroads. Because you may not may not want to actually go out and do something in public. Um, if you go to the corner of your street or of your street where you've got a crossroads, you know you're going to have people walking around. You don't want to sit in the middle of the street. And there's traffic, there's cars, and there's people. So it makes it a bit difficult to actually sit down and work at a crossroads. So what you can do is actually create an artificial crossroads, and you can do this in your garden in your house, in your temple, wherever you do your workings. And um, as I say, the crossroads is a liminal space. So the liminal space is a betwixt space or a between space. And you have quite a few different liminal spaces. The, probably the most practical, easiest example would be a doorway. Um, if you stand in a doorway, you are, you are, but you aren't. Um, it, you're not in one room or the other room, you are between rooms, and therefore you're in a betwixt space. Um, another example would be Twilight. Um, some years back, there's a website called uh, The Shaman's Cave. Uh, very interesting stuff on there. And I remember years back, I read on there about using Twilight as a betwixt place, uh, as a crossroads. And you, 
the idea was that you sit in meditation and you gaze at the um, the, the the horizon, and as it as the twilight, day and night meet a sort of a certain point, then it becomes a betwixt place, and you can actually move into um, other worlds. So, so let's get into artificial the actual artificial crossroads. So I I know of two. Uh, there might be more. I know of two that I use and work with. Um, I drew some very complex diagrams for you. There's one. It's very complex. And there's the other. <laughs> okay, so the first one is the quincunx. Um, you might see this a lot in hoodoo, and um, especially in reference to Papa Legba. Um, so the quincunx is five points so you've got the four corners and then the center and you can what you can do with this is actually you can lay this down on the floor and you can sit in it stand in it walk around in it whatever you as i say it depends on your actual working or you can actually put this on your altar and you can work your magic on top of the quincunx and all you do is you take little piles of salt and you put the piles of salt at the five points and what happens is it draws the energy in inwards to the center and also to the points on the outside but mostly you want to try and draw the energy into the center and that's where your, your magic becomes quite powerful um, you know if you have a look at hoodoo and laying down tricks and you'll probably find this mentioned a lot um, for instance if you're working some kind of love magic. You might want to put um, a pile of salt in each corner of the room and then one right in the center underneath the bed. Um, so there's a lot of uses for it. Um, but that, that's one which is, is actually quite good, especially if you want to work with Papa Legba, who is the gatekeeper. Um, he, he is the one that you go to if you want to speak to other deities uh, or other lower, depending on what system you're working. Um, so if you want to speak to them, then you, you should go through Papa Legba because he's the in-between, he's the liminal deity. Um, and he, he helps you uh, get in contact and transition between this world and the next, or the other world. Um, now the other one, the Witch's Foot. This is extremely powerful. I love this. Um, it's also called the Goose, Goose Foot, and if you know your runes, you'll probably recognize this as, as the Hagal or Hagalaz rune. Now, the witch's foot, it can be used in this in this format here, just as symbolism, but it also has a three-dimensional aspect to it. So, if you have a look, you've got a line there and a line there. Now, think of your cardinal points on each of these points here. So, let's say you're working um, east, north, west, south, okay? And you pull in energy to the center where you're standing from each of the points as you work through the cardinal points. Then you pull in energy from above and you pull in energy from below. And it all gathers in the middle where you are. You become the Axis Mundi. You become the Creatrix. You are pulling in energy from every single direction of the universe and the cosmos. And um, try this Try this working where you're actually standing there and you pull in from each cardinal point. You just pull in the energies and then you pull in from above and below. And you're going it, to, it's, it's quite potent actually. Um, you might find that you end up um, not spinning, everything else spins, but you stand still. And that, with that, that goes back to the cauldron mysteries basically with old dame fate from... Uh, I'm going to say British traditional witchcraft, as I think I've mentioned before, I think it's now called modern traditional witchcraft. Um, <clears throat> but basically the Cauldron Mysteries and Old Dame Fate um, speaks about Old Dame ba Fate being in the centre and Old Dame, Old Dame Fate being all and everything. Um, but as she is in the centre, in the Cauldron, then... Um, Everything else around spins, but she is in the center where everything is still. And the whole idea is to actually 
um, get to the center where you become where you become still and it's quite it's, it's you can actually do this practically if you you know the old merry-go-rounds in the kids playgrounds uh, not the merry-go-round sorry the the roundabout um, where you have the little sections of the handles and you stand and you push and you go round and round and round um, if you actually if you're going round it's actually quite good if you get like a few people to do this and they're all at um, is, it, is the word concentric points um, equal points from from each other anyway I think you get the gist of what I'm trying to say here um, so if you stand on the outside you feel the force the pull um, and it's quite chaotic but as you if you walk into the middle then that force stops and you become quite still. You're still moving, obviously, because you're not right in the middle. Um, and even there you would turn around, but you, you feel still. It's, it's a stillness to it. And that's the whole thing with Cauldron, Mys Cauldron Mysteries and Old Dame Fate and The Witch's Foot. Um, it's all, I think it's, I said it's also called The Goose Foot, which is, I believe is reference to the goddess Holder. Um, so, yeah, just, just give it a bash. Um, it's it. You can make it quite simple. Just stand, just stand in a position, and then um, call in the energies. Pull them in. In order to pull them in, what you can do is actually adopt something from uh, ceremonial magic, the the lesser banishing rite of the pentagram. And especially if you study Crowley and things like that, you'll you'll know that um, with each each cardinal point. You actually push energy out and then it kind of echoes so as it gets to a certain point it bounces back and the energy actually comes in towards you and you, you draw that energy in so you can try something similar where you actually you breathe out and you push your energy out and then you wait for it and then it comes flying back at you and all this energy comes in into the center so do it on each cardinal point above below and see how you feel um, and that's it um, please like, like, share and subscribe and hit the notification bell uh, so you know when I bring out new videos and, uh, and please comment. Um, it helps to get uh, my videos out to more people and I'd really appreciate it. And that's it. Thank you and I'll see you next week. Cheers.